Hi there, I'm Linda Lamisverda, producer of Central Texas Gardener. Michaela Almer, founder and CEO of Me and the Bees Lemonade, saw a need and filled it. In just 11 years, she took her recipes from the sidewalk to national distribution and even to the White House. As a social entrepreneur, she found a nonprofit to save the bees, became an educator, mentor, and author. So what's the buzz? Well, Michaela's 15, and she started her vision before she was in kindergarten. It is so good to meet you at last, Michaela. Hello, so nice to be here. How did you get started? I started 11 years ago, as you said, with a lemonade stand in Austin, Texas. I signed up for the Acton Business Fair in Austin Lemonade Day, and I had to figure out what product I wanted to create and sell. And so over the summer, two things happened. One thing was I got a cookbook for my great Granny Helen for her favorite recipe of Black Sea Lemonade, which was, it was pretty cool, but I didn't know exactly what to do with the recipe at the time. And then I also got to my two bees in one week. Of course, I was terrified of the bees after that, and my parents encouraged me to do a little bit of research. And doing that research, I learned that without the bees, I can't have a lot of the foods that I eat, but I also learned that the bees are declining at an alarming rate. And so I decided, hey, I'm going to do a lemonade stand and take my great granny Helen's flaxseed lemonade, add honey to it, which I just learned honeybees made, and maybe I can donate a little bit to organizations that are saving the bees because that's what I'm interested in. And that's how it all began. I set up at the fairs, sometimes in front of my house and sometimes in front of local restaurants in Austin and dressed up in a bee suit and sold my lemonade. Since I'm a kid and I wanted other kids to be able to try my product, I wanted to create something that was fun and functional. And so that's why I did honey because I knew, hey, it's a different, it's an alternative to sugar and um, it's also natural. And then I also wanted to do flaxseed because it's full of omega-3s and omega-3 fatty acids and it helps keep you going. That's what, mama, that's what my mom always said when I asked her what it does. She was like, it helps keep you going. So from day one, you are on a beeline to protect the bees. Tell us more about why you chose that as your mission. I realized that saving the bees and the importance of them was something that not a lot of my peers and friends at school knew about. That's why I started. I wanted to raise awareness. I wanted to like teach other people what I had learned and what I was so fascinated with and also do something where I could actively help save them. We've always donated a portion of the proceeds from of the sales from the stand and now from the product that's in 1500 stores. But we've also expanded and I started a nonprofit called the Healthy High Foundation. And so that's all about saving the bees through research, education and protection or preservation. And there's a bunch of different friend projects and collaborations that we're working on through there. Lady Bird Johnson would have loved that. The Healthy High Foundation, she would have loved to have met you. How is it that um, as an educator, you're growing her own mission? I'm sharing her mission by sharing what I know. So not only am I like growing and continuing to be ambitious and learning, but I'm also not just keeping that information to myself. I'm letting others who may think they're too young to start a business or want to figure out ways that they can help and participate. And I'm letting them know that information too, so they can pass it along too. So I like to say that I, am inspiring the next generation of change makers. The next thing that you can do if you want to help save the bees is continue learning about them. If you're curious, learn about them. Learn from my nonprofit. There's also so many other nonprofits as well. If you want to learn more plants, bee friendly plants, then the Wildflower Center is a great resource. Hi, my name is Leslie Eppinghouse. I'm a horticulturist here at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildfire Center. A lot of people don't realize how many different species of native bees we have here in North America. But right now we have about 50 bee species that are in decline. So the role of native plants in relationship to the um, prosperity of our native bees is really crucial. One of the reasons why it's helpful to have native plants in your garden to promote bees and promote other pollinators to your space is that we have a wide variety of shapes and sizes and seasonal bloom times that correspond to our bees that live here regionally. So now that our temperatures are starting to drop and we're entering the season of fall, it's a great time to plant annual seeds for bees, but you'll wanna keep an eye on the skies. And when you're planting those annual seeds, you either wanna do it when we get a good rain, but then keep in mind that when the temperatures increase again, as they always do in September, and sometimes even in October, 
you want to make sure that those seedlings, um, they germinate with water. So you may have to do some extra watering to make sure they germinate. And then even when they're very young through the winter, keep an eye on the skies. And if it gets too dry, don't hesitate to water them. Um, so you'll want to treat them just like you would a new plant. Great annual seeds for bees right now to plant would be standing cypress, basket flower, or partridge pea. Fall is also a terrific time to plant most of our perennials. Again, it's a little bit early right now in September, and so we usually do our fall plant sale in early October so that folks get the idea that then would be a good time to plant those perennials. Terrific perennials for bees come in all different shapes and sizes. Our bees come in all different shapes and sizes, which a lot of people don't know. So the bumblebees are large bees, and then we have all sorts of different tiny bees that need tiny flowering plants from early spring all the way through to summer. So the key with planting plants to bring in pollinators is diversity, diversity. So think about small plants such as frog fruit or a black dahlia. Those have tiny little blooms that bloom from very early spring until almost all the way through fall and into winter. So behind me, you can see the mealy blue sage. And if you look closely, it's covered in bumblebees. So that is a neat plant that produces blooms again from pretty mid spring all the way through to fall. So things in the salvia and mint family and sage family are always good for bees. Mallows are terrific, so hibiscus, rock rose, all the different mallows. Turk's cap is a great bee plant for shade. And then as well as the fabiaceae or the legume family. So think about all the legumes like the sennas and um, then go up into the skies, the desert willow. So don't forget your trees. You've got huisatch trees, which is also a legume. Blanco crabapple is a great fruit plant, and then our beautiful Mexican plum, which is a great big towering tree, but it has blooms all the way to the tippy top. Other big stellar ones is any plant that has the name bee in it. So bee balm, monarda is another annual, kind of going back to annual. You can either do it by plant or by seed. And things like bee brush or kidney wood are some of the more, not so much commercial, they're commercially available, but they're more of our wild plants that provide for bees. If you want to know more about the bees in your area, there are some great resources out there here locally. My favorite is the JAW Institute, and that's J-H-A. That's out of the University of Texas, and it is a really terrific resource for learning all about what types of bees are here in your area and what type of habitat your bees need. And then also, if you go to the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, website under plants, we do have a whole list of collections of plants that are designed specifically for different things. So you'll see that there's a collection of plants specifically for bumblebees. You'll see collection of the plants for all pollinators. And then you'll also see a collection of plants for general native bees. So Michaela, along with planting for the bees, what are some, you know, simple things we can do at home to protect them? Some things that you can do if you're, you know, wanting to save native, wild, and honeybees is first buy local honey. So that's helping the beekeepers in your area so they can take care of their hives. And second, get like local produce and farm fresh foods. The next one is finding plots of land. It can be your land or public land and planting different flowers, native flowers in different colors, shapes, and sizes. So that will attract a variety of bees and also a variety of other pollinators. And so what sparked you then with everything else that you're doing to write a book? Be fearless, dream like a kid. I've just had an incredible journey of growing me and the bees. It started with a lemonade stand, then we got into a local pizza shop. Now we are in 1,500 stores across 40 states. And it's just taken me to all these great experiences. And at each one of those, I've learned a different lesson or had a story that I wanted to share. And so since I'm a student, I can't accept all the speaking requests or invites that I'm given to share my story and like any advice that I have for business. And so a book was a really good way to reach an audience that I normally wouldn't have been able to because of time and travel and things like that. And so that's why I decided to come up with Be Fearless Dream Like a Kid. It's part memoir and part business guide, or I like to say business guide because I have to have a lot of bee puns. But it's about my story of starting and growing the lemonade 
and also the lessons I learned along the way, like coming up with an idea I, and it includes activities on how you can do that. Making a budget, here's how you do that. Here's, even if you're an adult and you want to learn how you can dream like a kid in business, here's how I've dreamed like a kid and here's how you can do that in your company or in your life. So it's a middle school read and an adult read and it's pretty fun and interesting. And you also include a lot of really great information about the bees themselves. One of the other things you talk about in your book is you and your family kind of came up with a way or ways to deal with something we all struggle with right now, and that is the balance between family, work, and life. And when you're a family who's running a business together, how do you do that? So the first thing that I think allows us to run a family run company is that we all know our roles in the business. So my dad is chief worker B or head of operations. My mom is chief marketing B and she brought her experience from ha starting her own marketing firm. And then my brother is the head of photography. So that helps because we all know like our strengths and then also when it's time to collaborate with another family member or also another team because we've grown our team to have sales and operations and marketing and so on. So that's one thing. We have certain times that are just family times or just break times that we keep on the calendar, especially if it's after a time where we're going to be working really hard to meet a deadline. We're like, okay, after this time, it's going to be a break. Or sometimes when I go to speaking engagements, like I had the opportunity to speak in South Africa and Budapest and Singapore, we'll do the first part of those trips as business and meetings and present presenting and then after that we'll make it a little family like get together time as well where can we connect with you and get a book if you'd like to connect with me you can reach out on social media it's at michaela's bees and that's instagram and facebook and twitter i really want to see the next adventure uh for you on this journey this expansive journey you've already taken in 11 years and most of us don't even do an entire lifetime. Thank you. And I'm thanking you guys. Bye-bye.